Greetings. It's my pleasure seeing you all on this Friday evening. I'm glad that you've found time to join us, uh, to all others who will be watching us in recording. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for joining. So, first of all, let me tell a few words about today's meetup. Uh, I'll start with words of appreciation for All Stars IT. It's an international IT outstaffing company. It's connecting leading brands with world's top talent. And as you may know, today's meetup is related to .NET. We have some open vacancies. If you are interested, please scan the QR code or visit our website. As you may see, we are looking not only for .NET developers, mm -hmm. but for full stack developers, DevOps engineers, SQL server, DBA experts, and all around, like probably if you think about anything IT specific, you may found an uh, you may find an open vacancy. Uh, at the moment, we are leading global software R and D company. Uh, we also specialize in technical support and talent acquisition. Uh, so, if you are searching for a job, or if you are looking for some kind of NIT related services. Uh, probably you hit the spot. So feel free to speak with our representatives by any means that uh, uh, you would prefer. I would start with uh, reaching us on any social media you like, like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Telegram, Viber, WhatsApp, uh, literally anything we present everywhere uh, and almost everywhere like at the moment it's more than 15 sites in the world uh, we've been working for more than 20 years uh, and at the moment it's more than 1000 employees globally and more than 100 major tech companies rely on us there is also a referral program so you may recommend your friend and get this small bonus up to 2000 American dollars. So if you have uh, a friend that you want to recommend or you want to join us by yourself, feel free to scan the QR code, find us on social media, or if you are was if you are watching us in recording, you may click on a link in the description. So, social media, literally everything. So today, I want to introduce a friend of mine, a person who literally invested a lot into dotnet community into microsoft tech community a person who's been working with the dotnet stack for more than 15 years already currently he works as a solution architect in a soft serve company and he thinks that uh, dotnet and c sharp connects people and gives them opportunity to build high quality solution. His all solutions. <laughs> He's also a Microsoft MVP and a very friendly and open-minded speaker, organizer, and top-notch professional. So Igor Fesenko, it's my pleasure seeing you today with us. 
Yeah. Thank you so much, my mate. And uh, really uh, appreciate a lot. And uh, thanks for having me. And uh, let me share my screen. Uh, and before we start presentation, uh, please definitely follow uh, All Stars IT uh, because it's not my first time. And I really appreciate each time uh, when we uh, do these uh, technical meetups. Okay, let me hide these controls and show our presentation. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's get started. And uh, today we are going to talk about uh, .NET apps observability with open telemetry. Uh, my name is uh, Igor Fesenko. Uh, I'm a generic engineer uh, with some constraint, of course. Uh, constraints are C Sharp and uh, Microsoft Azure. I am active uh, Microsoft uh, MVP in Dev Technology and also I am Solution Architect at uh, SoftServe uh, company. So if you want uh, to get slides or source code, uh, uh, demo source code, uh, you are more than welcome to visit my personal website. You can download slides and uh, uh, open source code. Uh, as Yevgen said, uh, I really uh, like .NET and .NET is my uh, passion uh, because sometimes uh, I don't have such opportunity to work closely with .NET and uh, programming, but uh, still uh, I want to be a best friend uh, to .NET and C Sharp specifically. And by the way, you might see uh, C Sharp attribute wants to be best friends and it is actually real uh, attribute and you can find in ml.net source code. So uh, let's get started. And uh, before we go to open telemetry and everything uh, connected to .NET, I'd like to talk about telemetry data and make sure that we align it and uh, why, why it is important. So uh, telemetry by itself, it's not something new, uh, right? Uh, and uh, from, from Wikipedia, there is a definition, but let me uh, try to give uh, some sense why, why we need uh, telemetry at all. Uh, probably you remember, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe sometimes for uh, old projects, even five years ago, um, you have your end user and you have your virtual machine with, uh, as a host for your app. So, uh, Interaction flow uh, was very simple. You have a uh, request and it was processed, uh, goes through DNS, uh, probably IES server and reach your application. So you can technically have uh, less than three or probably five components in your request pipeline. But nowadays, uh, when your end user uh, hits uh, your application, request goes through different layers and different services. And from the right to the left, you might see example of typical application. When you have DNS, you have a web application, firewall, you have some uh, load balancer, um, different uh, services, uh, if you're living inside microservices architecture, uh, just to complete uh, one request, probably you need to interact with different services uh, for the same request. And after that, everything goes back to uh, our end user, to our consumer. And uh, it sounds like a complex system. And actually, it is a complex system. And if you want to understand our entire user flow, uh, how request goes uh, and uh, what probably wrong uh, and you need to have telemetry data so you, you can navigate and drill down into each component and uh, understand the root uh, of the cause. So in other words telemetry data it is uh, something that we already know but uh, let's try to uh, provide some structure. Uh, everyone knows about logs right because uh, we write code and uh, we use logger we started with log for net and logger and now uh, thank you microsoft thank you .NET platform we have uh, di based il logger and we can easily write uh, logs right it is something that that we use to 
simplify our debugging experience and understand uh, what is going on. Uh, also, uh, sometimes uh, for, for some teams, I saw that uh, we use concept of metrics, but we try to say, okay, in our uh, logs, we process it uh, five uh, items, or maybe we uh, wrote uh, 10 files and uh, name for it metrics, right? Uh, something that you can represent a current state, right? Uh, get some snapshot. For example, thread pool Q lens uh, equals 10 uh, at this point of time. And also important, uh, as I mentioned before, now we are living in distributed systems. Even if you have, I don't know, monolith, right? Uh, still, you have third-party systems, you uh, have database, or you communicate with another uh, third-party uh, tool, or I don't know, to send email, uh, or to register uh, something in your ERP system. Still, it's distributed system, uh, and uh, probably you want to correlate uh, all requests uh, and try uh, to uh, build uh, some structured uh, log when you uh, correlate between different systems. And that's why you need uh, traces uh, when you can build entire uh, user request flow. And uh, also we need to remember that uh, when we're working with our logs, with our telemetry, uh, it's not something like produce or maybe uh, collect from other systems and uh, at some moment of time we just delete. We need to transmit logs. Uh, after that, it uh, would be great to analyze logs, maybe do some, uh, I don't know, uh, signals, uh, register some signals when we can say, okay, we reached uh, some 80% uh, of CPU, uh, let's uh, create an alert inside our system so we, we, we can do some proactive analysis. Uh, and of course, we want to store, uh, sometimes it's required by law, I mean audit, and you need to store all information uh, for period of 10 years or something like that. So actually it is a complex system. And I know we did logs uh, for a while, but still, still, um, <clears throat> uh, we have um, some areas we want to, to improve. So, and uh, now uh, we are going to talk about open telemetry and why we need open telemetry and how it saves uh, our uh, lives. Uh, open telemetry, it's a platform. Um, it is really important and uh, it's agnostic. So there is no uh, some uh, big company uh, that say, okay, this is my standard, appropriate standard and, and that's it. Uh, let's go and use. It, it's the best uh, in the market we, we should use. No, uh, it is uh, vendor agnostic, platform agnostic, observability and telemetry platform and uh, it supports all three main aspects. Uh, it supports logs, metrics and traces. And uh, since uh, it's platform, uh, it's responsible for entire flow. Uh, so how, uh, how your data uh, can be uh, produced, uh, collected, processed, exported. And um, you may think about open telemetry like HTML5, HTML standard, uh, for example, HTML5 standard, right? It is standard and it is description uh, and definition of, uh, of everything. And after that, you have uh, big companies that produce uh, the tools uh, to process this standard. And uh, that's why uh, OpenTelemetry is uh, standard and it defines API how we can work and uh, you don't need to have vendor lock-in if you start with application inside from Azure or you use some new relic or you want to use uh, Datadog SDK uh, with a own uh, format. Now you have flexibility. If you say, okay, I'm going to use open telemetry 
uh, standard. It means that I can export my data to New Relic, Datadog, uh, Azure Monitor, uh, all other uh, tools. And uh, this year, next year, uh, you might see even more tools that support uh, Open Telemetry Protocol. And also, it is important that uh, you, you don't need to uh, create some specification. There is everything in one place. You even have uh, open telemetry protocol and you have specification for logs, metrics and traces. So uh, I think that uh, we are going to, to see uh, in a few minutes uh, how it works, how you can use inside .NET, even including .NET 8 new features. They just released it uh, a couple days ago. Uh, and by the way, uh, .NET uh, started working on this approach uh, probably since .NET, .NET 6. So they already did a lot uh, related to this uh, open telemetry. Uh, data flow diagram. I want, I want to talk because it is important just to have high level uh, picture. Uh, and understand how uh, how it works because from my experience uh, when I call my application that I build my solution written uh, using C sharp dot net uh, you also can use open telemetry with some uh, third party tools for example uh, we also integrate Jenkins with our new relic for one of project and Jenkins uh, sent all uh, telemetry data uh, through uh, open telemetry protocol to new relic so you don't need to set up some new relic engine on your uh, Jenkins uh, or do some additional work so we have Jenkins we configure open telemetry export export tool and that's it and you can send uh, to any uh, to any uh, service that accepts open telemetry and it's it's really cool feature and uh, it's standard uh, supported by uh, different uh, vendors and I really like it uh, regarding uh, our application itself uh, on this picture uh, you might see that we have our application service and we have different types of logs we have uh, system logs and application logs itself when we system it's uh, how our runtime operating system works and probably uh, it is not probably it's usually sends some information uh, how to start how it works and also we can uh, get this information app logs uh, of course uh, also as we discussed it traces uh, also it might be some metrics or for example you sold uh, five uh, items uh, also infrastructure metrics uh, regarding uh, your CPU utilization uh, memory footprint and of course you can incorporate with uh, infrastructure attributes and say okay this is my dev environment it is staging environment or it probably dynamic environment based on on your pull request and you see that we have a concept of open telemetry collector uh, before usually when we have our application our service uh, we can install for example new relic sdk and uh, instrument our application and everything goes directly to new relic ingestion endpoint uh, now you can do the same uh, you can uh, directly point to new relic or any other uh, service or maybe your uh, grafana uh, with uh, prometheus but i would recommend to use open telemetry collector uh, open telemetry collector it's some uh, middleman uh, between your application and uh, target uh, service. Um, on this diagram I call it backend because it uh, ingests uh, all your information, all logs, logs, traces, metrics. Uh, why open telemetry collector? It is single uh, single point that can combine uh, do different uh, post uh, processing. For example, you want to enrich uh, some 
uh, information to your logs or traces or metrics. Um, probably you want to filter and say, okay, we don't want uh, to send uh, PHI data, for example. And you can make sure that it is some additional layer of security. And uh, if, for the instance, if uh, engineering team uh, by error try to send some uh, personal data uh, to your service, uh, you can configure and say, it is rules that we, we don't want to, to, to send this data from the service uh, or something like that. Uh, it, it is not simple. There is no one uh, click button, but you can configure and filter and have additional uh, layer uh, of, of protection for data. Or you want to combine uh, and transform some data and send uh, to, to your uh, backend service. And uh, at the end, you will have related telemetry. It is really important that uh, when you have logs, you have traces and you have metrics, you can correlate and navigate uh, between uh, each other. So you can, uh, by a log, you can see all related metrics or, I don't know, for example, you see traces and you see error in this trace and you can say, okay, uh, for this trace, show all logs available specifically to this trace, specifically to this request from my user. And uh, it streamlines and simplifies a lot of uh, debugging experience. So uh, I think uh, it's enough with uh, our uh, uh, theory. Uh, let's deep dive and see how we can uh, configure uh, this and how we can use uh, our uh, open telemetry inside our uh, .NET apps. So let's start uh, with our project. Uh, you might use, it is available on GitHub, a uh, link will be provided. Uh, let's start with this simple solution. We have a couple micro services. Uh, it's tried to uh, use some dummy uh, distributed system. We have order generator. Uh, it's our entry point, it generates order, and after that we have order service, and once uh, order is processed by this service, we create uh, commands to our billing and shipping service. We use message broker, or RabbitMQ, oh, by the way, let me, uh, you can run uh, on your own, uh, there is docker compose file, so you can uh, create uh, using Docker Compose, you can spin up uh, entire infrastructure. So uh, we have services, uh, different services. We have some shared project. Uh, it's my recommendation uh, because uh, there is a lot of boilerplate code and you don't want to repeat uh, and copy paste across different services. It is .NET uh, 8 uh, solution. Uh, so um, I will highlight some uh, features that I recently released. Uh, everything else is available even before .NET 8. So, and uh, everything starts with uh, our DI. Uh, you need to set up, uh, of course, uh, packages. So let me show. Okay, so manage, yeah, manage to get packages. All of them are available uh, and configured, so you can just uh, copy paste uh, for, from project. Uh, there is a lot of uh, open telemetry. You technically need open uh, telemetry uh, NuGet package, and uh, there is some exporter, extension, instrumentation. Uh, so I would recommend if you want to start, you can just copy paste uh, from, uh, from uh, this solution. Configuration is pretty straightforward in terms of uh, NuGet package installation. Once you have it, uh, you can add open telemetry extension, uh, configure resource uh, I'm using because uh, it is different from different place and I want to uh, set up uh, application name. So uh, properly uh, application name uh, to have uh, correlated uh, and connected to my uh, 
different services. You might see that we have uh, three main uh, components with tracing, we have with metrics. So you can, for example, configure and say, I don't want to have metrics at all. I'd like to have only traces. Uh, and uh, everything else is okay for me. And of course, logging. Uh, you can use open telemetry uh, built in uh, logging SDK, or I prefer to use Serilog. Or maybe if you use some other uh, library, uh, you can add additional exposure to your library and say, okay, now send everything to open telemetry. And uh, as I did with Serilog, I don't want to change anything in my, in my solution. So I just want to have uh, configuration right to open telemetry. So, and uh, that's why I like this idea when you have a standard and uh, each uh, library can implement some connector. So you don't need to rewrite your entire logging system. But if you're starting a new project and you don't like serial log or you don't want to have uh, another library, um, you are good with uh, iLogger uh, with uh, .NET uh, iLogger interface and implementation and you can configure uh, add logging at open telemetry and that's it so uh, you are good to go and by the way regarding uh, logging uh, I didn't like actually when we have uh, logger log warning uh, information log debug uh, log exception uh, log error critical uh, because from my experience it's not clear and uh, just uh, as a joke and uh, of course uh, some uh, ideas to think I'd like to have uh, another uh, log levels uh, for example in development mode it means that if I develop I want to see logs in production mode it means, okay, uh, something I need to take care. And uh, regarding priority, what is different between uh, error and critical? Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, um, it, it's not clear uh, when you need to open some uh, wiki page or so. So why don't have to investigate tomorrow, for example, or wake me, uh, wake me in the middle of the night and uh, uh, call me and now it's, it, it's time to fix it. So. Uh, it's just uh, an idea to have something uh, like that. Uh, let me close it and uh, return back to our open uh, telemetry uh, configuration. Uh, now you see that I am adding source and uh, when you add open telemetry you can configure uh, some source because uh, you might not know but uh, some libraries, uh, even .NET libraries, produce events and they already use open telemetry. But by default, uh, you don't get any information, any events, any logs uh, for, from, uh, you, from library. If you want to add library, you need to add source and configure your source. For example, uh, in this solution, we use mass transit uh, to have communication between services and integration with RabbitMQ and uh, I want to have uh, tracing uh, with uh, mass transit and I want to understand when I put message into queue and how message uh, was uh, uh, taken uh, by uh, other consumer. I want to uh, track um, entire flow because sometimes when you have HTTP request, you, you might have some correlation ID or so, and probably you can correlate logs by your producer and your consumer, but it's not easy, to be honest. And uh, that's why open telemetry uh, might help with these distributed traces when you have your uh, integration with this library. Uh, also, I'd like to have uh, ISP.NET Core instrumentation, HTTP client and SQL client. And um, if you open, it is uh, from from uh, library, from your Git package. But if you open, there is uh, nothing uh, special. It's technically try to add uh, source 
and that's it. So it adds source and if it is uh, .NET 7 or .NET 8, just eight different sources and that's it. So uh, let's go back. So now you configure. Uh, also, I mentioned that you might have some uh, sampler. If you send a lot of data, uh, store this data and process data, for example, if you use some third party tools, it might be quite expensive. So, and uh, you can configure some sampler and say, okay, instead of 100%, we want to send. I don't know, 60% of data or try to uh, squeeze my data and uh, just save save some dollars. Uh, or we can configure if it is development environment, I want to see everything. I want to see all traces in development mode. Uh, if you want, you can configure different uh, exporters. You can use Asia Monitor or with Azure Monitor, uh, there is no native support for TLP protocol and uh, they provide library that do this transformation from OTLP uh, to a Microsoft uh, proprietary uh, format. So uh, this is workaround, but still you can do it. Uh, I mean, before we use application inside, right? Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, OTLP exporter and uh, sent to our uh, hotel uh, collector is uh, recommended approach. Uh, we do the same with metrics. Uh, we just add, instead of source, we add meter. And uh, we also want to add some uh, information from uh, .NET Core runtime and send this information as well. Uh, some HTTP client, how many requests, uh, and so on and so on. The same idea. You configure how you want to collect and produce and you configure how you want to export this information. And of course you can create your own uh, meter, right? And uh, if you uh, develop a new library, you can use open telemetry approach and create a new meter. And uh, if uh, some of uh, end users and uh, consumers of your library, they can just uh, connect your library into the pipeline and also integrate and inject in entire your pipeline. For example, I did with my transit. I, I don't need to do some listeners or something like that. I can just add meter and add a new uh, meter name, my transit, and that's it. It's pretty simple. So let's start by the way uh, our services uh, they want to work and we see uh, in action uh, how uh, how it looks like. Okay, we can close this one and see uh, some uh, consumer uh, what, what we can uh, do with this open telemetry Kyle how we can uh, extend it if we want, because now looks like that it is boilerplate code and that it, uh, if I want to extend, if I want to have some custom, uh, uh, can I do? L let's try to find answer for it. So we have uh, our consumer, it is billing service, uh, it's order placed consumer and uh, let's see how we can log. Okay, now we see that some services started. Uh, Okay, good. They are working, some placing order, canceling order. Let's see. Uh, by the way, this is consumer and uh, you might see .NET 8 feature. It is, uh, it uses primary uh, constructor. So uh, my class definition and I have constructor. It's really great for DI. Thank you Microsoft for this uh, C-sharp 12 feature and uh, specific mass transit uh, definition. We have our order place it, consume context. And uh, I do some generation of payment method. Uh, another feature of uh, new .NET, we have random shared instance. You don't need to create new random uh, object and there are some extension uh, methods, get items, uh, shuffle, uh, not shuffle, use this array by the way, another C-sharp uh, feature uh, array 
uh, initializers, inline arrays, uh, generate uh, one item and just take. So it, it's some uh, naive implementation of uh, give me random value from this array. Uh, also, instead of some real call to service, we try to create a new payment transaction and select payment method. And you might see log order payment info. Why I want to focus on it? Uh, there is, doesn't matter do you use open telemetry or you use uh, another tool. I'd like to discuss with you a new approach, uh, mo modernized approach, because uh, it from .NET 6, I believe, uh, or maybe 7, uh, how to do proper logging if your system, if it is method uh, in your hot pass and uh, you call it million times. Uh, so you, you definitely want to have your uh, logging approach uh, optimized as much as possible. And in this case, I recommend to use, uh, create some extension and use attribute logger message. Uh, in this case, it generates, uh, it use code generator uh, to create, not, not this one, implementation, to create uh, most effective and performant uh, logging uh, method. There is no uh, any uh, boxing, uh, boxing and boxing um, string concatenation. Uh, so it is generated specifically for all your uh, parameters. So it, it's it's really uh, performant. And uh, you might see a new feature if you uh, use it before. Uh, when you use log message attribute, you, you have to provide all parameters. And now you don't need it. If you have log properties, you can provide entire object and all information will be logged. So uh, when you do this logging, also, if you want to add some additional information to your trace, you can use uh, activity. Uh, activity is a .NET uh, native object. It's not from uh, OpenTelemetry NuGet package. It's from System Diagnostic. It is built in in .NET runtime, and uh, you can use activity if you want to inject some data inside uh, your traces. So. Uh, also, it is available. Or if you use uh, some API, let me see. If we have some API, ISP.NET Core provide uh, service and it's registered service for you. HTTP activity feature and you can get uh, activity so you can set some uh, additional information. Uh, for example, let me do this. If I create some HTTP call, or I can inject data into my trace. So uh, th this is uh, idea uh, of this uh, activity feature and uh, OpenTelemetry SDK uh, maps everything to uh, from activity object to OpenTelemetry object. So uh, let's see visual presentation. And of course, we need to open our uh, browser to see all our application. So uh, I am using uh, a set of different tools. Uh, probably you might know uh, Jaeger UI. Uh, it's a uh, proven tool for distributed tracing. And uh, let's see what we have. We have different services. Uh, order generator, billing service, uh, order service and shipping service. And by the way, uh, when we send data, we can create application uh, map and uh, let open dynamic uh, architecture. You might see uh, it is generated automatically. It, it's really cool if you have your uh, microservices uh, environment, you can see how they interact. You might see how many traces, how many requests from order generators go. And uh, uh, looks like that we have some cancelled orders that uh, were not going to uh, our billing and shipping services. But 
if you have more services it, it's a good map and it is real map active map and uh, you can even use uh, as a high level architecture picture and uh, easily reverse engineer uh, your solution if you need to uh, let's see to some traces we have order generator i know it is our entry point let's find some traces so and now you see that we have different uh, traces uh, we have uh, place order send and if we open you see that now we have ability to drill down and check each command each processing L let's see how how it uh, works we have order service we have order uh, place order send okay uh, we have some text we have uh, additional information you might see that uh, meta information is available uh, you can navigate you can uh, add your own we see in a moment uh, for example uh, we integrate uh, this service instance id uh, service version uh, of our service itself this is my computer name machine name uh, after that we can go order receive it is process it uh, it was taken from our RabbitMQ and uh, also there is some information available uh, after that we process our order and we uh, place another message and as a comment to our shipping service and billing service so oh, and uh, by the way you see uh, we see in a moment in the code uh, billing service uh, also inject some action metadata a payment transaction id so uh, you have one place you can navigate and have full picture uh, how request from user goes uh, let me try to set more limit and see do we have some errors we want to analyze okay I see some errors so for example we see uh, error uh, based on this picture we see okay we have error we have some text if we want to have metadata uh, maybe we want to inject client ID and say okay this is our client ID uh, let's see what's going on we see logs we even have uh, exception stack trace uh, we have uh, exception uh, message so some uh, additional information and and from this picture you might see that okay we have one call uh, try to process our message there was error and uh, after that we have second it was retry and retry was successful so it means we process this order but uh, with retry so uh, if you for example see if you open uh, this uh, trace uh, you might see that we have cancel order sent and uh, it was processed and that's it there is no additional uh, traces uh, related to our shipping or billing service so it, it how it works and for example if you open our order service uh, we might see uh, error message if you want to have some uh, logs information right we also as a, a sample I use uh, sec uh, it is uh, from serilog uh, team uh, a tool uh, it was created uh, initially to use by serilog tool uh, but now it supports uh, open telemetry protocol and i just sent all information to open uh, using open telemetry uh, protocol and uh, we will see uh, in a moment uh, how configuration looks like and you can see that okay uh, we have all logs and uh, why it is important because uh, if you just use text file and you don't use structured logs approach you have only message right some, something like that it, it is your text file and uh, you're lucky if it is with uh, some timestamp 
but if you want to find, for example, by order ID, is okay if you have this order ID, right? I inside your message, you can uh, try try to find. But uh, when you want to do some complex search uh, or query your data with some dimensional, it's not easy, right? And uh, that's why you need to have some structured logging like Serilog or iLogger support structured logging and uh, use proper methods. Don't try to concatenate strings. You might see that we have uh, additional attributes. We have order ID, uh, we have service instance ID, service name, context, and uh, a lot of information. And we can uh, populate and use uh, our own. Oh, and for example, there is a trace ID. So, I might say, okay, let me find uh, all logs related to trace ID. Uh, what does it mean, trace ID? Trace ID, it's your, in, in our case, it's our request ID. So it is a unique value, uh, for, unique for this request. It goes through all services. And uh, you might see that we, uh, where it was, shipping, publishing, we're publishing order, uh, billing service, uh, shipping service, uh, receive it, uh, and everything related to this uh, request. It might be your user request or generated uh, by, by, by your service. And also you have some uh, span ID. Span ID, it's specific to this operation. So if you open, uh, you might see that span ID uh, uh, is different. But trace ID is the same. And if I open, uh, want to visualize, if, if you remember, I said that all your uh, telemetry uh, data is correlated. I use one tool and I want go to another tool and hit and see okay now i have a uh, trace id i have representation of the same data but in different tool oh and uh, we can do the same uh, for example try to find okay we have this text uh, and find uh, this information inside our logs also if you don't like sec or uh, you want to use uh, Grafana, you can do uh, the same. You, you you can just send the same data. You add one more exporter and send to uh, to Grafana. Uh, you need to use some storage, but still, uh, in in actual demo, we use Loki as a storage. But uh, you 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 can do and see the same information, different presentation. Uh, you can use search, but everything is available. If you want, you can send the same data to new relic so no changes required to your source code nothing uh, required to do in your application itself you just need to go to your collector configuration so uh, quick review uh, i have different services right check uh, jaeger uh, and uh, most important it's open telemetry collector as we uh, review it on our presentation let me switch back to our presentation open telemetry collector and now all configuration of uh, our expert functionality processing is inside uh, open uh, telemetry collector configuration you see that we have uh, Configuration for export uh, Prometheus. Uh, we have uh, OTLP Jaeger. We just send address when we want uh, to publish data. Uh, only difference that Prometheus uh, use another model. It's use uh, pool model. If uh, Loki Jaeger uh, use push model when we send data to them. Uh, Prometheus usually uh, pull data from us. So. Uh, we, we need to expose some endpoint, but still. And uh, you might see that we have 
actually configuration. So we have uh, our uh, configuration for traces, metrics, and logs. And if I want to add new relic, I can easily add new relic. So I just need to add my exporter configuration. It depends uh, if they uh, use OTLP protocol. It might be uh, HTTP or it might be gRPC. Or in this case, I just need to provide a new relic URA, uh, URL, and that's it. And add, okay, I want to send logs uh, to them. Uh, and uh, also, let me show quickly dashboard. You can create a dashboard, right? Easily and send data uh, from, from your application. If you want, you can uh, switch from Grafana and Prometheus uh, to New Relic or application uh, to Azure Monitor or Datadog. So in this moment, no changes required from your code. You just need uh, say, OK, we ha have open source telemetry. This is your uh, middleware, right? You send logs. Uh, you say we follow open telemetry standard and that's it. After that, you can uh, configure your open telemetry uh, collector and export data and process data as you want. So it, it's really cool. It's finally some uh, layer that I like. And it is not something that uh, supported only by Microsoft or Google or Amazon. So it, it is supported by Cloud Native Foundation. So. Uh, of course, Microsoft contributes, Google contributes, uh, Amazon and all other uh, big players contribute into this area. But still, there is dedicated committee, there is standard. And by the way, it reached a 1.0 uh, version. So it is available. It is ready uh, to be used inside production. Oh, and uh, by the way, as I said, uh, regarding logging, uh, log information. Uh, usually, uh, I saw that you try to use concatenation and uh, use dollar sign and say, okay, we have uh, some order ID and uh, it's concatenation. It's not. Uh, it's not good at all. So, and uh, I would not recommend to use it. Uh, just use placeholder your order ID and pass as a parameter. Uh, in this case, you will have uh, information inside your event. You see, received placeholder. Let's try to find. Okay, received placeholder, and you see we have order ID. So what I can do? Do search by order ID. and see entire flow. Yeah, I, I know now it is uh, inside uh, your message, but to search it uses uh, this JSON representation and additional metadata. Uh, it, it doesn't search by um, your message, uh, resulted message. Uh, also, let's see some metrics, right? Because uh, with logs and traces, it is clear we understand what about metrics how you can create your own metrics because uh, sometimes you need uh, you do some file processing or some logic and you want uh, to publish your metrics and the logs it's not the best representation because in logs uh, when you have uh, a lot of information for example see it produce a tons of message and uh, if you want to find okay I process it five uh, you probably uh, won't see at all because uh, it was replaced by new messages. So you want to have some uh, metrics. Uh, in our case, uh, let's do how many orders will place it and see what we have. We have our order type. It might be book, toy or game at the same logic. Uh, just uh, take one from this list, <coughs> order type. Uh, logging this information and uh, this is order metrics and we say increment with order type so we say okay we have new order and we increment and we pass uh, additional data uh, what is it our order metrics 
uh, it is uh, registered with DI. It is our own uh, <coughs> class. We have meter name because uh, if you remember, you need to subscribe and say, okay, I want to listen uh, order metrics inside my open telemetry. We have counter. There are different types of uh, available meter. Uh, histogram, uh, for example, if you want to create some uh, complex uh, meter. And we have uh, meter factory. And this is improvement, by the way, uh, provided by uh, .NET 8, because before uh, you need to create meter using uh, new meter factory. You need to uh, create uh, e each time and use new. And uh, now it's DI uh, based, so you can inject uh, using your uh, DI in ISP.NET Core 8, it's already uh, injected by, you can uh, add metrics, use extension method uh, in .NET, if it is not ISP Core. You create a new meter and you create counter. Uh, you provide name, in our case, it's please it orders, uh, units measure. Uh, you can call orders or count, but uh, by the way, there is a specific site unit code for units of measure. And uh, if you don't want to create your own standards, uh, probably you might to use uh, this site and uh, these curly braces uh, also uh, according to, to the standard. But you can select what, what you want and really uh, it is free form text works for you and uh, we have increment method because we need to store this counter we add delta and we add one and uh, also we want to have some uh, multi-dimensional and say okay uh, we just want to have orders and see what is product type and the cool feature that it's uh, already integrated because we create meter uh, we can use uh, .NET counters uh, tool. Uh, let's see, order service is run. Let's open terminal. And uh, it's .NET, oops, .NET counters. Uh, we need to provide a uh, monitor, uh, provide name of our service. and. By the way, it's a cool feature. You don't need to specify port as we did before. And um, uh, just let me show. You have default uh, counters uh, from ISP.NET Core and .NET Core. You might see them. It, it's a good for debugging, right? You see allocation rate, CPU usage of your service in real time. You can easily, you don't need some uh, fancy tool for that and see how it works. But if you want to understand how many files do I process or how many items uh, process it by this service, uh, let me read. And uh, instead of standard, I use uh, our order metrics. This is the name. Let me start again and see. I want to see my metric. So, and now you see that we have orders how many orders per second and you might see even different type uh, let's see book toy and also there is one should be oh, okay yeah book game and toy and now you might see in real time how our service is working and of course you uh, can use Prometheus and Grafana to visualize uh, your data and uh, see uh, historical change because now it just show delta between uh, different between interval of time for example if we uh, one second ago we have 10 and uh, now we have uh, 11 it shows one because it's orders per second so and we have dimensions so we can uh, configure them and uh, I think with that uh, we are good and uh, it's time to, to see if you have some questions and uh, I would love to answer them. So. 
Igor, I have posted one question, but it's rather general, though it will help me and probably some of us to understand uh, your material more. Uh, I am not familiar with Jagger, Prometheus, Loki, and Sec. What are those? Like, uh, what is their role in this uh, uh, data or logs collection? Okay. Yeah, it's a great question, by the way. Yeah, uh, because uh, I use them as third party tool. Uh, le let's uh, talk with uh, maybe back to, to presentation. Uh, now we saw how infrastructure, uh, our application uh, should be instrumented using some auto and manual approaches, uh, open telemetry collector. And when we have our logs, traces and metrics, uh, we probably want to visualize them. And uh, for that, uh, there is some backends, I call backends services. We all know uh, some uh, software as a service like uh, New Relic, Azure Monitor, uh, Datadog. And uh, one of uh, example is to send all data uh, to uh, providers like New Relic, Datadog, and see all fancy dashboards, visualization, do some alerts, some configuration. But if you want uh, to use your own uh, hosted on-premises uh, solution, uh, there are some of them. Uh, probably you might know some Zipkin uh, or Jaeger. Uh, they are dedicated specifically for distributed tracing. Uh, Jaeger uh, was built by Twitter uh, to visualize distributed tracing. So, and this is main idea of this tool, uh, just to visualize uh, distributed tracing and see uh, how how it. <clears throat> it looks like because when you have uh, unprocessed data uh, it's hard to understand uh, what is wrong but now you can visualize you see uh, some timelines um, uh, dependency uh, between all requests uh, so th this is idea so and it is a uh, battle tested and proven tool uh, twitter x company uh, now uses uh, not now uses uh, in production uh, this uh, Jaeger UI so and uh, it is open source and uh, also it is available you can use as a main tool even for your production or for me personally it's a good tool that I quickly uh, spin up uh, using uh, docker container uh, and uh, so uh, this information locally so this is idea just to visualize. Uh, SEC tool, uh, it is uh, the same approach, absolutely, but it's specifically for logs. It allows, there is some dashboards, a new version, but uh, for me, it's a quick uh, tool that I can use to spin up instance using a container and uh, publish all data, if I want to navigate for my local uh, local debugging. It is open source, I believe, but license, uh, it requires license if you want to use uh, for your product. So it, it's a good maybe for local development or just as example of third party uh, integrated with open telemetry. Uh, open source tool uh, and uh, with proper license that uh, might be used in your production. It's uh, Grafana uh, for visualization for dashboards and Loki. It is uh, their own storage for logs. So you just uh, send all information to Loki. I would say it's another standard of uh, open, uh, open stack. Probably it's not, it's not right name for, for this, but it's a uh, stack that available for you if you want uh, to avoid using some expensive tools like Datadoc, New Relic or other else. You can spin up your own instance and or with Grafana dashboard and use uh, Loki. But if, I don't know, maybe in a month you, you just got 
some additional money, some budget, you can easily switch and uh, send all your data to New Relic. So this is idea. And uh, Prometheus, uh, it another uh, storage uh, to store information about uh, metrics that uh, can be visualized. It's time series database Prometheus and uh, idea to send all information to Prometheus. And after that, uh, Grafana dashboard can uh, grab all data and visualize. You can create your own dashboard based on on data that you have. So it's technically idea. And uh, just to sum up, all of the tools uh, as an example, how you can visualize. Uh, they are uh, proven, production ready. You can use and host your own version. For example, Azure Cloud has managed Grafana. So you can spin up a Prometheus and send all data to Prometheus, except only uh, SEC. SEC, it is probably for personal usage. And also, please check license, because uh, I'm not sure even if it is corporate and uh, you develop some commercial product, uh, I don't think that it might be fully allowed to use even for debug purposes. So, but idea is to visualize data and do quick search of it because there is no one, uh, one solution for development. So that's why I have different components. I hope it adds more clarity to this question. Indeed, indeed. But uh, may I store this generated data somehow locally? I don't know if I, uh, at the moment, uh, <clears throat> just collecting the, the logs and all the telemetry like metrics and traces and uh, like I don't, I want to pass it somewhere else. Uh, and I just want to collect it locally in some uh, sort of files. Can I do it? Uh, yes, I believe you can do it and uh, just set up exporter and uh, use uh, JSON uh, structure and save into your files and dump, dump into files. So it is possible. Uh, if I'm working with those uh, third party tools that uh, you introduced, do I need to configure them somehow? Like, uh, is there any configuration or is auto automatic, automatic? Uh, technically, uh, only one need, for example, now we use Docker Compose and it is only related to our uh, local, uh, to our dev environment. Uh, I don't think that you want to have uh, your production uh, instance using Docker Compose or uh, Do Docker instance, uh, it might be Kubernetes. But uh, what, what you need to configure only, it's uh, uh, setup port and uh, usually it, it, it's only for Docker Compose and open uh, ports. Uh, probably you want to configure storage and uh, follow all recommendation uh, if you want to have one, more than one instance, in, if you want to have some uh, distributed cluster and uh, you don't want, for example, to lose all your uh, logs information and make sure that they are stored and replicated. In this case, you definitely want to check uh, official documentation how to set up uh, for example, Loki in high available cluster. So, uh, but uh, by default, idea to ingest data. So, you, you, when you configure and install, it just open API endpoint that you can hit with your open telemetry collector. Uh, it is related to third party tool. All configuration uh, goes inside your open telemetry collector because you need to configure your uh, services pipelines and uh, your export logic. For example, uh, Jager uh, probably will be protected by some uh, authentication and you need to provide credentials or you know, some, some token. So just to make sure that only uh, your services uh, are allowed to, to publish publish data. Or maybe it might be private, uh, private uh, network and in this case uh, 
no no security additional security are required to communicate and, and you see for example loki this is just api so push push data so loki by itself provide endpoints but in terms of uh, infrastructure and uh, your non-functional requirements like uh, performance uh, high availability yep it, it is a specific product so you, you can configure uh, following uh, recommendation recommendation and experience who work because usually the stack like Prometheus, uh, Grafana, it's, it's not something new, it is proven and uh, we, I believe we have a lot of, uh, lot of people with uh, valuable experience. Yeah, I'm familiar with Grafana to be honest, but like for some reason I have never heard about those. Okay, thank you, thank you, amazing. I think for a lot of projects we in invented <clears throat> so-called bicycle, and everything is uh, already here for us to use. No. I, I I wish I'd heard about this like five years ago. Yeah, and and unfortunately, we didn't have five years ago because open telemetry mm -hmm. it, it's some new like a standard. We have. Mm -hmm. I forgot proper name. We have some another telemetry, but now we have official uh, standard that is supported by different uh, companies. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned, Microsoft, uh, Google, Amazon. Amazing. Amazing. I I Igor, you give us very practical things as usual. I do appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Do we have some other questions? Ladies, gentlemen, do we have anything to ask you? Her? Probably uh, if someone watch recording, so you can publish your question, post your question, and uh, we try to provide answer to it. Let's do it in yes. asynchronous way. Nice, nice. Amazing, amazing. Actually, that's something that I would like to test by myself and use in several projects of mine and, and share as well. It solves a lot of... Uh, now those are not issues, but it definitely will simplify things for our development. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, also it is important to understand that open telemetry, it's not related to .NET itself. Open telemetry, it's standard, and it's uh, if you use Node.js, you use uh, GoLang, uh, JavaScript, you have uh, you have uh, already SDK, and you can do the same and send uh, information using Open Telemetry protocol. So. Not, nothing uh, specific to .NET. You can use Java and use Java SDK to send open telemetry data. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, thank you for sharing this. I do appreciate it. Uh, Igor, do you want our uh, viewers and listeners to follow you on some specific media or like to visit your blog? Uh, LinkedIn, but uh, I think uh, Twitter, but I believe I am good. If you have uh, any questions, uh, you can open my uh, personal website and find uh, Twitter or LinkedIn and you can uh, post post your question. I'll try and do my best to, to, to provide answer. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being kind. Okay, if it's so, uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Thanks all stars for organizing this meetup, for giving us this opportunity to gather this Friday evening. I know it's also International Students Day, so congratulations for all the students and all the people who are studying and learning something new. Uh, Igor, again, thank you for this opportunity for teaching us, 
for sharing your knowledge. I think it's a very honorable mission and I I do appreciate that you volunteered. Yeah, thank pleasure you is mine. Yeah, thank you so much again. Thank you so much everyone and All Star City, of course. Yeah, please uh, apply and refer your friends. So thank you. Okay, that's it. Have a great evening and see you next time. Follow our social media and see you on the next meetup. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.